Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Shiz and Giggles, our weekly wind down podcast where we talk about anything and everything. My name is Emily and I will be your host today, but I'm never alone. My first co-host, she is a dog parent, loves to cook, travel, and enjoys a nice glass of wine. She has a passion for painting, sculpture, and all things plants. A crafter and a tinkerer by nature, she loves to learn and has been in the world of events for eight years, an avid indoor gardener and owner of literally more than 100 plants. It's Heather. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Happy to have you. <sighs> Happy to be here. Good. You do have a lot of plants. I do. <laughs> I do. Well, let's also welcome our second co-host. She's a lover of all things true crime, a tourist sun and moon, puts hot sauce and sriracha on everything. Let's get, let this girl spice up your life. It's Demi. Hey, hey, everyone. It's good to be here. Happy to have you both here. All right, let's kick things off this week because we are talking about a trending topic, which actually has been a trending topic for increasingly for many years lately, mental health and Mm self-care. In a world that is so fast-paced and always on the go, we have to remember to carve out time for ourselves. And what better way to do that than with new experiences? And you don't have to break the bank sometimes. So simple as simple things as moving furniture around can create a whole new look and feel to your space. So I would like to ask my co-hosts and all the people watching, what are some ways that you reset your frame of mind? Is there a certain activity? Hmm. I like to um, clean like getting everything around me in Mm. order and set up. I always feel like it gives me a fresh mindset, especially if I'm feeling cluttered in my mind. If I have a free space around me, I feel like it frees up some room in my mind to like take in more information. Mm -hmm. I 100% agree. Cleaning, um, sometimes like re-feng the space can also help, but cleaning, organizing things like being in a place that I'm aware of, you know, it's not all like haphazard. It's awesome. It's the way to go. I don't, don't laugh at me, but I actually have a very simple trick that I use on a daily basis just to like kind of less so of a complete reset as just a little, a little mild uh, reminder to pay attention and be present and breathe. And it's looking at the sky. Mm -hmm. If ever I see, like when I see the sky, I don't know why my brain, it's because I've been doing it for so many years, just Mm -hmm. using it as a reminder to just breathe and be present. And it does help. And I, I know a lot of other people pick other things, like when they see a certain thing, it reminds them to pay attention. Cloud watching is definitely Mm -hmm. where it started, (laughs) but also moon watching and stargazing. And so it's anything that's happening with the sky. I just try to pay attention to it all the time. It's crazy that you bring that up because I've never really thought about it in that way, but I definitely notice that anytime, like there are a lot of stars in the sky I can see, I kind of look up and I'm like, wow. Just pay attention. And it like takes you a second and you're like, it happened to me the other day and I made my parents come stand outside with me and look at the sky for like (laughs) five minutes. I was like, just look at it. (laughs) I think anything that you can pay attention to and put your energy and focus on helps you reset. So there's that. What is kind of a follow up to that? What is one unique way you relax? Not just reset, but relax. I have one. I like to float. So it's like my jam. If I mean, there's like limitations to it. For example, if you are claustrophobic might not be Mm. the best thing, but also they do have pods. So it's not like a fully enclosed or encapsulated space. Um, But for those who don't know what floating is, it is a type of like spa relaxation treatment where you go into like a large pod or tub Um, that's filled with water and a ton of salt. So you float on top of the water, Um, buoyancy. Um, There's also like lights and music and other things that put your mind at ease. It's Mm. wonderful. If I could go once a week, I would. My goal is like once a month, but it's awesome. Or massage. (laughs) massage. That sounds fun. I know you've mentioned it before and I've never heard of it prior to this that's so cool there's a few things like definitely the first time you go it's going to feel a little weird but then Mm -hmm. once you get comfortable 
There it is, floaty. Wow. You'll float. That's, does it really look like that? Oh, yeah. I mean, that one's like real nice. So that, mm -hmm. that might be like West End vibes, but <laughs> it is a thing. Um, the So I go to Vitality for those who are in Richmond, Virginia, Vitality. Mm -hmm. um, I go there and I like the, the float room where it's like literally ceiling, walls, the whole thing. It, you feel like you're going into a submarine and you can like shut the door oh, wow. and it's awesome. That's so wild. Yeah. Demi, what about you? What do you do to relax? I do a miniature, not as cool version of floating. I take baths a lot. Um, I take baths and read. Those are my Same. two things. Mm -hmm. So I probably take a bath three times a week now. Um, I've gotten into the habit of it and it's really nice. And I have Epsom salts and um, bath bombs and bath bars so that it's bubbly. And then I turn all the lights off and I bring my Himalayan salt lamp in. And I turn my Himalayan nice. salt lamp up and I light a candle. So it's like dark and it just feels nice in there. And it's a good atmosphere. I feel transported with that mm -hmm. like detail you provided. The, the, the Himalayan yeah. salt lamp is definitely oh. the <laughs> creme de <laughs> finishing cut. The casual. She takes casual baths with Himalayan yeah. salt lamps and Sherpas. <laughs> super, super and yeah, it's normal. obviously not Hot as much towels. of the production as yours. So... <laughs> Oh, she's someone That's come awesome. and bring her tea, you know. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm. It's definitely it didn't start like that. It started <laughs> it started not like that at all with all the lights on and then it turned into turning one light off and then it turned mm -hmm. into I was like I have a Himalayan salt lamp. It's been it's been months of building up to having these really nice relaxing baths. Love that. I'm definitely a big bath person as well and I've always used that as a method like as a a relaxing like every other week once a week epsom salts absolutely but for the last couple of months i've been living in an apartment without a bathtub and that has been very hard but i recently mm -hmm. found out you can buy like collapsible bathtubs if you have and i have a big bathroom don't know why i have such a tiny shower stall but a big bathroom so i might end up getting like an inflatable bathtub and um buying a himalayan pink lamp yeah oh, exactly lamp. yeah Absolutely. <laughs> I love that. That's love to go. so much fun. Thank you all so much for sharing the ways in which you relax, but it is time for segments. So let's go to You Grow Girl with Heather. I'm back, baby. <laughs> Plants are the game. You Grow Girl is the name. All right. So we are going to talk about a variety of plants that you can incorporate into your daily life for peace. And they have different properties and different things and all that fun stuff. A lot of plants can be high maintenance, but the few I'm going to speak of today are low maintenance and just something that you can incorporate into your everyday life. So first, we're going to talk about aloe vera. So a lot of people know aloe vera because of its sunburn properties and such. But you can also cut off the leaves to put it into a, I was going to say a tea. Don't do that. Don't drink that. <laughs> I mean, you could, but um, <laughs> you can use it for cuts, burns, also inflammation. It's a powerful plant that can actually also purify the air around you. So it's not as same as an air filter, but it can definitely help detoxify your air from harmful chemicals. So this is definitely one you can place um, in your room or in an area, especially if you don't have a lot of airflow. Or if you're dealing with a home mold problem like I am, sheesh, I just like cover myself in it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely one to have around for your benefit. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, I did it. Demi's been making fun of me. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Now, this one, I think this is maybe, if not my favorite, my second favorite is lavender. So lavender is so awesome um, because it is used to help you relax and stay calm. Of course, it is um, a plant. Yes, so it does have... Um, essential elements to it, but you can also use it to help you decrease anxiety um, because of the smell. So that's something that you can have on your end table or near your window, something near your bed. Um, folks actually do little lavender like 
I almost want to call it a swatch or something that you can put near or in your mm -hmm. pillow uh, yeah. to help you, yeah, get calm and in the element at night. Um, it's also known as an antiseptic and anti-inflammatory. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But lavender pillows are great. You can also buy the spray if you don't want like, you know, mm -hmm. a spray of plant because Virginia and lavender, they're not like, you know, totally harmonious. So when folks grow it really well here, they definitely have a green thumb, just something to note. But it's great to have around. You can take deep breaths to try to relax, take mm. it all in. Another fun fact, um, I don't know how I learned this. I think because my wife did a study about it in France, but you can also put lavender on your window sills, like in a little swatch box mm -hmm. to prevent scorpions from coming through the windows if oh, you're in that type of climate. Oh, so, fascinating. Just a little fun fact. <laughs> scorpions don't like lavender. They don't. <laughs> All right. So another thing is peace lilies. So for a reminder to re remain a work-life balance, try peace lilies. Why? Because these also help neutralize harmful indoor chemicals. Um, and it's also believed that they help flourish your ment mental, physical, and spiritual sense. Okay. Reason being is because they are a symbol of peace, tranquility, prosperity, purification, and solitude. So they say to have peace lilies in your office, actually, um, to help um, balance the energy of the space, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's a, just a little way to think out of the box. And they're easy to maintain. You can one of these suckers like once a week. <laughs> this here is a tried and true. If you're like, I don't have a green thumb, get a snake plant. Snake plants are amazing. This is what I have next to me, actually, next to me. I have a lovely snake plant. This lovely lady gets watered every two weeks. But it is a great reminder to survive and thrive during the hard times because they can survive and thrive through anything. Um, they're also able to convert carbon dioxide at night. So if you live in an, air, an area with no airflow, you can, again, like aloe vera, surround yourself um, and help sanitize the air and oxygen in your space. Hmm. Yeah. This one's my favorite. Oh, it's my favorite too. This one is my absolute favorite. My wedding was covered in eucalyptus. It smelled great. I loved chic. It was excellent. Very fun. So eucalyptus is great. It helps treat asthma, colds, uh, congestion, congestion, um, because it has such a distinct and pleasant aroma. Another thing, especially if you have asthma, allergies, you can purchase this, tie it, um, what are you tie it up, whatever, and actually hang it in your shower. Mm -hmm. And you can have a nice eucalyptus moment. So Demi, you can incorporate this into your, your Himalayan-ness, you know, <laughs> throw it in the mix. <laughs> There's going to be so many smells happening at Demi's back. <laughs> it's going to be excellent. So there you have it, some plants. The candle I use for my bath is eucalyptus scent, so it will yes. it'll fit right in. Eucalyptus is 100% my favorite scent and one of my absolute it. favorite plants. Very awesome. It's awesome. But also, I can attest to the aloe vera thing because I literally pulled a cast iron out of the oven the other day and without even thinking, it was sitting on my stove, but it was slightly off without even thinking. I just ran, reached over to shove it back onto the stove right in the middle of my palm. Huge oh. burn mark, but I have an aloe plant. So I went over, snipped the little piece, aloed it up. It was yesterday and I don't, I can't, I have no injury whatsoever. Oh, wow. It's awesome. incredible. So yes, plants, as we know, I mean, we eat plants in our diet, right? They have so mm -hmm. many benefits. And mm -hmm. just in general, having green in your space is better for you. So all in all, if you don't have these plants, you just have plants. The benefits are awesome. They help lower um, anxiety, increase attentiveness and memory, increase productivity, reduce stress, as we're speaking of, and also sparking creativity. Mm -hmm. Mm. So it's good to have natural elements in your space. Thank you so much for those amazing information, Heather. We're moving on to our next segment, which I have a feeling is going to contain more. Let's go to Demi for Here's a Tip. Hey, hey, everyone. So luckily, the tips that I'm about to give, we have not discussed yet. So for this week's Here's a Tip, I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks on how to do self-care on your own so that you feel better mentally and physically. 
So the first tip is to do something for others. Um, a lot of times when we think of self-care, we think of doing things for ourselves, but we don't realize a lot of times that giving to others makes you feel better on the inside. So the first thing is doing a date night for your friends. I did this recently. Um, I actually took my friend out on a full date day and we hung out all day and then watched movies at night. Here they have a little gift bag that you can give to your friends with a blanket and candle and hot chocolate. And that's always nice. It's great when it's a surprise. They're normally super happy and it just feels good to do something nice for someone else. Another thing you can do for your community more so is you can donate to a food bank or donate blood. So if you scan the QR codes, it will take you to the website and tell you the best places and where near you you can either donate food or donate blood. I've done both. So I really do recommend it if you're able and capable to. Normally for food banks, a lot of times they have cardboard boxes around you where you can go and donate. So that's super exciting. Next up, we are going to go into um, changing your sheets. So that might seem super simple, but I feel like a lot of us overlook this. And sometimes just having clean sheets to sleep and be in makes you feel better. There's not dust on them. There's not anything else. And being there, it feels like a refresh to your day. So, so I like to change mine a lot. I know Andrea at the office changes hers every Sunday, which is amazing. It's something I strive to do at some point in my life. Um, it just feels good to be in something clean. It's one of those things where even though it's not a complete refresh, it's one thing you can do to move yourself forward to having a clean mindset. And then I'm really time. enjoying that meme situation. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, she's like, that's how I feel after I change my sheets. Right. And then last but not least is something I started recently incorporating in my day every day again. So I used to do yoga every night before bed, at least 10 minutes. And I recently mm -hmm. found this video. It's a YouTuber named Grow with Joe. And she has a morning yoga routine that you do with affirmations. So each move has an affirmation with it. And I really enjoy it. Even though it's a morning routine, I do it at night. It's not any more strenuous or anything. It still relaxes you. And it is proven that if you stretch before bed, it gets your body ready faster to relax and go to sleep because your muscles are already relaxed and ready to rest. So I've started doing this every night and I've noticed a big difference in my night routine. It like tells me that it's time to go to sleep by establishing this. So every night at around 9.30 ish, I do a 10 minute yoga routine and my body knows that it's time for bed. So then around 10, I'm ready to fall asleep. So I've really enjoyed doing this. If you scan the QR code, it takes you to this video specifically. There are tons of videos online and this is more of a beginner routine. This one isn't too crazy or anything. It's about, I wanna say 60 seconds per move. So 10 moves in total. So it is great and amazing. And once you start learning them, you can do them on your own anytime. So I do have questions for my co-host. Have either of you tried any of these things to kind of relax and give yourself some self-care or are there any that you would be interested in trying in the future? Well, may I say that I hope all of us have cleaned our sheets <laughs> at, at least one point. some point. At some point in our lives. <laughs> let, me, let me start there. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I've done... I haven't done the food bank thing. like like as far as like participating in a soup kitchen. I mm -hmm. have donated food and donated time to different organizations and stuff, um, but I haven't done that specifically. I donated mm -hmm. blood once, and that wasn't my jam. Um, but yoga's cool. Yoga's <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, donating blood definitely isn't always for everyone. I did not have a great first time either. Um, I know that there's a lot of tips and tricks to like move forward with if you ever wanted to try again. But for some people, it's just not their vibe. You definitely want to make sure that you eat before and not super sugary foods. It's typically like proteins and obviously some sugar so that your body is ready to get rid of blood. And then also something I recommend is there they have chips and juice. So I would recommend instead of waiting until the end when you're already feeling nauseous and sick to ask for them at the beginning because then you can snack on them as you're giving blood and it's kind of like making sure that your nutrients are going up as you give. That's a really good tip. Yeah. Hmm. So my dad's a nurse. So like that kind of stuff. <laughs> and after I went the first time and I didn't get apple juice until the very end, I figured out that it's better to do it as you go. That makes a lot of sense. I've definitely... Food bank drives is something that I used to do 
regularly. But and date nights too. I like making food for my friends, but I, I feel like I'd get even more out of it if I intentionally reframe that as a self care thing mm -hmm. and not just a giving generosity to everybody, including myself. Sure. I love it. Thank you, Demi. So following up with that, last but not least, we do have my segment. Want to draw about it. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to, per usual, our segment where we get to release the inner creative and sometimes the inner child as well. Today, we don't actually have an activity. We're going to be talking about ways in which mindful drawing and drawing can be meditative. And there are a lot and a lot of practices that this is the case and a lot of documented ways in which drawing, whether for whether you think you're good at it or not, is something that helps with relaxing and with calming anxiety and nerves. So I do have a couple different practices that I really hope you take home and try today. But first, I want to start with what the best supplies are going to be. Now, these are my recommendations. My go-to is 110% always an ink pen. And it's not a ballpoint pen either. I want an ink pen, a felt tip ink pen. The, kind of, the nicer ones always make me just that much happier. So I invest in nice ink pens. But my other recommendations would be markers and colored pencils. They just make for the easiest level of, uh, of doodle, which actually brings us to our first thing that I would recommend. And all of these are going to seem silly, but I genuinely mean it, just doodle. And the key to doodling, to like the best, weirdest, most elaborate doodles is pick a point and just keep adding. Draw a circle, that's literally what I do every time I start doodling. And it helps you kind of release tension in all of your body. Pick a point, draw a circle, and then just keep adding. Draw a line, draw another circle, draw a triangle. And it's all just lines and shapes that end up adding up and up and up till you get something wild. But just doodle. The next thing, if you don't feel like being that controlled, is just scribble. And sometimes this is a little bit more of a of an immediate need if you really need to get that anxiety out, is just scribble a whole bunch. Scribble in circles, scribble a line, just do a little bit of it. And it helps, it really does help with just releasing. Get it outside of your body. The next thing is actually a full practice that I would recommend that this one is a little bit more involved, but I absolutely love it. Mindful mandalas is a way of identifying something you are feeling and putting it into a doodle, for lack of a better word, but into any kind of visual image. So draw yourself six circles on a um, a piece of paper and then identify six things that you are feeling. Don't worry about putting words to it. It doesn't have to be, I'm feeling happy because most often our feelings are way more complex than that. Start with one dot right in the middle and start drawing outwards like the way that all mandalas are. And it will end up being very weird and prob probably not this pretty because this is very pretty, but it is definitely helpful to identify your emotions and put them down. The next thing is more of a quite literal meditation practice. This one is not about what the end product is, but it is about if you have a hard time meditating, me, I cannot, because it is so hard to calm your mind and to pay attention and to th think of nothing, can't do it. So I have to focus on something. And this is one of the best ways that I know how to do that. Put a pen on a paper for every in breath you go, go up for every out breath, go down for, and then just keep doing that. And at the end of it, you find that that is meditation. The next thing that I would recommend is actually very similar, but it's not quite as calm. <laughs> this is a little bit, but it really demands focus to do this. So this is a sped up video, obviously, because this is a time consuming activity, but it ends up being meditation for a lot of people, myself included, because I have to focus on the lines being right. Now, the key to this is draw a squiggle and for every up squiggle, divert, like you go up even more and then you meet down at the same down point. So it goes to the same point at the bottom, but then goes up off and then it just, and you just keep repeating. And I think it's the repetition of this that is so calming and it ends up looking pretty awesome. Even if you don't think it's going to, it basically always does. 
go slow and just focus. And it's that like taking your energy and your anxiety and focusing it on the page. These are all ways that I really love utilizing drawing practices as my meditation practice because I personally can't find that my brain calms down or is quiet enough for long enough. Mm -hmm. So do you guys think that you would try any of these? It's so crazy because like I never thought about the fact that drawing or doodling could be like um, a way to compete with anxiety but I had horrible anxiety in high school, like specifically when it came to classes. So I was a big doodler in my notebook and like to the point where my teachers knew I was doing it to focus mm -hmm. because I had such a hard time like zoning out in the middle of classes. So I would doodle during class. And now that you're talking about, it, I'm like, it definitely made me feel calmer and it made me feel better. So like whenever I'm feeling like I can't concentrate on something, especially back then as I would doodle. So it's mm -hmm. it's like crazy when you start hearing things that you realize are self-care tips or are meditative or are anxiety reducers that you didn't realize you were doing in order to help with those things. Absolutely. It definitely helps me listen. Like I can hear and pay attention better mm -hmm. if I'm doodling. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just doodle. Um, thank <laughs> you for like that, a... that affirmation, Heather. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Also, just doodle sounds like a child's Nike campaign. Like, doodle. <laughs> just doodle. I'm going to trademark that. Trade <laughs> All see. right, ladies. Well, this has been so much fun and honestly calming in and of itself. So is there anything else you want to add or things you want to touch back on? We learned that plants if we didn't already know this, are so good for our mental health and really, really can literally be beneficial to our physical well-being as well as our mental well-being. We've also learned very tangible ways that we can calm down and enjoy and self-care. Clean sheets is probably the one that I'm like, I need to go home and wash my sheets today. <laughs> they probably need it. And hopefully you enjoyed some of our drawing techniques, drawing tips, drawing habits. And there's a lot of different forms of meditation that came out of today. So with that, thank you to both of my wonderful co-hosts, Heather and Demi. And a special thank you to all of you watching us. We hope to see you again. Um, but we always stream every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can find us at the All About Presentation YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn page. If you can't make it, then no worries. We, of course, repost our episodes on YouTube channel and on Facebook. Happy Friday and have not only a good weekend, but a calm, relaxing, well-balanced, happy mental health weekend. <laughs>